Good afternoon, this is the Ugly Truth coming to you live from uh, 51 Division, downtown Toronto. Uh, it is Thursday, March the 15th, 2012. If you go back in uh, my archives, you'll see that one year ago, I was uh, here pretty much in the same place for the same event. This is a nationwide uh, protester rally going on in all major cities across Canada and this is a rally to protest against police brutality, police violence, police impunity. Now I don't have to tell anyone how much we rely on the essential services of just police officers who are there to uphold the law. Uh, however, when even one officer breaks those laws and uh, abuses their power, what happens is the public loses their faith in the police forces. So it's very important for good officers to uh, speak out against the bad officers that are giving them bad name and for the public to come out and say this is unacceptable. Police officers are public servants. Uh, no one is above the law. If they break it, they should be just as accountable as anyone else. But they seem to enjoy some type of impunity where they can get away with doing whatever they want. Whoever their victim is, well, too bad, so sad. My name is Kabir, I'm from Basics Mini Newsletter, Justice for All We Campaign Against Police Brutality. Um, I mean, I'm sure everyone here at this rally, is, this rally is already aware, but over the past few months, there's been a gang on a killing spree, a crime spree in the city. And when I talk about this gang, this, this organization, this is one with a long history of violence, of murder, of corruption, extortion, perjury, every crime in the book one that acts in complete and flagrant violation of the law, um, one whose members are heavily armed and who maintain a strict code of silence. And as we could have already guessed, I'm not talking about the mob, I'm not talking about any other average street gang, I'm talking about the Toronto Police Service. And I think we need to recognize, I mean, we're here on International Day Against Police Brutality. When we talk about police brutality, we're not talking about police misconduct, we're not talking about a mistake or an error or an aberration. This is what this force, this is what this institution is designed to do. And, I mean, in poor communities and racialized communities, the Toronto Police Act, the same way the Canadian military acts in Afghanistan, the same way the American military acts in Iraq, um, and the same way the IDF acts in the occupied territories. They act as an occupation army, an occupying force. Component of austerity is, of course, the billions of dollars that are going to go into the prison system with this new crime bill. The fact that the Toronto Police Force, when all other city services were being cut, were being gutted, the Toronto Police Force getting a pay raise so that these pigs Within four years, their starting salary for a police constable is going to be $90,000. $90,000. I know we're here for one reason. We're here to save lives. Are we here to save lives? Yes or no? In the last two years have been some of the most brutal and tragic years in our city. And we just have to stand up. And we cannot have a summer like we had last year. Some of the incidents included Carabana. But the police had to apologize. Why a person died, another person uh, disabled. I believe I think all the bullets were from police bullets. We got a we got a serious serious situation, and we gotta get more accountability, and we gotta look at the protocols in place. So I'm gonna talk about. Kabir, he brings up a point. You know, there's two articles right now in January and, and it's talking about the Attorney General is undermining the SIU. And then and then I'm reading Andre Marin of the Ombudsman wants more power from the SIU. You know what? These articles sound a lot like the same articles I was reading two years ago, three years ago. It's a big circle. It's not really making an honest spot. It's just and we got Cop Watch. I think Cop Watch is a great idea. And you know, we're going to launch Cop Watch Toronto. Because that's, that's, that's the only way we're going to get accountability 
and more transparency. Have mentally ill people watch their sons, you know, tragically be 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 killed, like Charles McGillery. You know, he was eating pizza with his mother. He was deaf. He didn't answer something, and he gets he gets thrown to the ground, and he, he ends up dying. He I have a question to ask all of you guys. The thing is that we want to go for merch. Who's up for merch? Option number one is we take we can't go through them if we go through the major intersection or major anything we have to walk on the sidewalk. But but if we go through the alleyways or small areas, they'll give us half of the sidewalk. Angry? Happy? <laughs> all right. Um, piss off. All right. It's good to be pissed off because uh, we need to make uh, these people know that we, we, we are not going away. And Charles is not going away. I know the SIU uh, say that nothing happened he, uh, and the cops who um, kill him are, are going away free. And I'm sure that this is uh, something that we're not going to tolerate. We're going to be pushing through the course and hopefully to get some kind of satisfaction to the mother. And he was a fellow tenant of Toronto Community Housing. So he, as, a, as, a, as a member of, of the Toronto Community Housing, I really, really want to see some justice done for, for Charles and his, and his mother. So thank you very much for you coming out. Straight up and down. Uh, they've never served any useful purpose to any society. They've ever been present and they've always been there to defend the rich and the property from everyone else. They've been there to put people back in the slave camps right now. It's, you know, they're going around and up poor people all day, every day. That's all they fucking do. There's no reforming them. There's no, no, we need to abolish the police and create alternatives to the police system. You know what I'm saying? We need to actually defend each other in our communities. We need to look out for each other. So I'm, I'm going to do a quick little acapella for y'all. Uh, you know, because we are, we are going into a police state right now. You know what I'm saying? We started the G20. You know what I'm saying? People all over the world are fighting the police. A police state, a police state, we're living right now in a police state, a police state, a police state, rise up, rebel, before it's too late, this police state is a massive mistake, we about to see fascism's face, so before it's too late, start smashing the state, break the banks, don't give the bankers a break, they give orders to the pigs in the streets, give them quarters to me, power tripping, when they holding the big brothers watching and he knows we asleep, and we don't need no pigs. We don't need no prisons. We need healthy communities to live in. We should live every day like a vision of escape in the system of enslavement to rich men. Action is strategy, not what you think in a police state. A police state. We're living right now in a police state. A police state. A police state. Rise up, rebel, before it's too late. Ain't no freedom of speech when we speak of the police. The elites cut the least, get us beat in the streets. Pigs shoot the crowd with tear gas canisters. Let rubber bullets fly, shoot us like animals, so fuck the pigs, no respect, fuck police, they don't serve or protect, they search and molest, they got burners and vests, bulletproof cars, they idle all day, trying to meet the quarter, find a chump to pull away, a police state, a police state, rise up, rebel, before it's too late. So the African community and the Black Action Defense Committee is, is taking part in this International Day Against Police Brutality Rally to bring awareness to how the issue of police brutality historically and currently impacts our communities. The African community is calling for the complete elimination of the over-policing of our communities and individuals within other racialized communities. Tavis is not a community-based policing, as the Toronto Police reports it to be. It is an instrument by which racialized communities, especially our youth, are tagged and then released, only to be tagged again and again with negative mental, economic, social, and physical health repercussions. Tavis is pacification, big brother policing. Tavis is an excellent way to shuffle African people into the prison industrial complex. We demand the elimination of the all police presence in Toronto's school. We are also demanding the appeal of Ontario's school to prison pipeline act, also known as Safe Schools Act. Yeah, right. We demand the total and complete independent review of all police injustices, past and present. Yeah. 
We demand the Special Investigations Unit to be truly independent of the police, both in appearance and in mandate. Yes. This includes not hiring past police officers as investigators or having its board consist of past or present police officers or their known sympathizers. And just so everyone is in the knowing, our community stalwart, Mr. Dudley Laws, the Right Honorable Dudley Laws, yes. On the 24th of this month will be one year of his passing, so it's rightfully fitting that we have this, that we're here today in this celebration. Let us just give him a moment of silence. He was a man who spoke for everyone, not just the black community.